Hi guys, thanks for listening, it's Ian again, um, and today we're going to be looking um, at tip number three. Um, I've integrated into tip number three, um, uh, which is all around about predicting and predictability, um, a, a little bit of possibly what I felt like I missed in tip two, which is all about um, taking in information and, and um, the quality of our input. Um, and of course they're linked really. So, so tip three is all about being predictable and predicting what's going to happen. Now, um, the, the most difficult thing about the information we have from when we read in the road as a rider, driver, cyclist, etc., is we have a truncation, um, a, a, a wall, a limit of what we can see. And I absolutely believe that um, we need to manage um, our level of vision with, and, and manage our speed in relation to that. Now, there's a technique called limit points, which is, comes from roadcraft, um, which is a fantastic technique, essentially linking speed to vision. Um, however, one of the things it talks about is um, it uses the furthest point we can see um, within uh, our view of the tarmac um, uh, to sort of gauge what speed we should be doing. And I absolutely passionately understand that and agree with it. The bit that I don't necessarily agree with is the furthest point. And I think that the shortest point can be more important. So, for example, we've got a junction to the side. Maybe we can't see into that. And that can become more important than um, uh, the, the, the maybe the view ahead, um, for example. It may also be the view behind. So for me, it's sort of a combination of those things. What's our view generally? What can other people see of us as well? Um, as I say, I think I missed that a little bit from, from the last video, but I'm going to integrate it into this one anyway. Um, of course, um, in terms of limitations, that would also be limitations on things like hearing, sound, um, and, and other things around about that. And things like blind spots, of course, are a limitation of our view, um, etc. as well. So um, in terms of predictability then, so what do we mean by that? So um, in order to be fantastic as a rider, driver, pedestrian, cyclist, etc., um, we need to we really need to make sure we predict what's going to happen next accurately, which can be extremely hard. So, um, but the principle behind this uh, is that we're trying to reduce the element of surprise. We're trying to um, know uh, or have a good idea about what's going to happen next. So, if we give you again, this sort of links in with the observation and the, and using all your five senses um, technique. So, uh, for argument's sake, it may be an ice cream van, and obviously, you know, around about those sorts of situations, we're expecting children, and and again, that's linking in the the buildings to the to the risk. Um, the other part of this, of course, is most people expect things um, to possibly happen, um, but as a, an advanced driver and certainly defensive driver, I tend to expect those things to happen. And what that means is, is I'm much more prepared for that situation ahead. So for example, I'm approaching a farm uh, on the left hand side um, and therefore I'm expecting a tractor to come out. I can't see into the farm maybe um, because there's a brick wall there. So I might change um, my position and obviously knowing what's around me and I may reduce my speed, maybe being in a lower gear, my different position, etc. But I'm, I'm trying to think about measures in which I can put in place in preparation for that tractor. And that tractor may never come across uh, me or never come out of that junction, but when he does, I'm ready and preloaded. Ultimately, though, you know, we still want to make progress and we still want to get from A to B in a reasonable length of time. But equally, you know, that tractor is probably the biggest risk on that section. So that's what I'm preparing for. Uh, just an example, really. Um, the other bit is being predictable from another person's perspective. So uh, part of that's decisiveness, of course, when we make a decision, like entering a roundabout, if we start to go and then change our minds and go for the brakes, then it's probably going to be a bit confusing for the chat behind. So we do want to be... Um, uh, easily predicted um, uh, from other people's perspective but also predictable from a communications perspective so uh, for me it's about being conspicuous and being seen you know headlights being on means we can be seen really well that will avoid the incident because we can be seen as we go underneath the branches of the trees um, in, on a bright day for example so I tend to drive my headlights on most of the time and I know there are pros and cons to that as well um, but generally speaking, uh, I want to be seen. Um, and then uh, things like uh, brake light signals, very useful. Rear end shunt being one of the most common crashes in the world. So we want to make sure we avoid that, ideally by giving communications nice and early that we're going to be slowing down. Of course, we can overdo the brake light signal and cry wolf, um, but we, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to communicate when we know there's a hazard or potential hazard ahead, we, we're putting the brake lights on to, to communicate with people. Of course, left and right signals, making sure that those are accurate and concise and timed well so that um, it's not confusing for people. So that, that's what we mean by predictable. So tip three, um, predict, 
by uh, being aware of our limitations and what we can hear, see, taste, etc., smell, um, uh, you know, reducing that by expecting um, things to happen, and then uh, and then communicating really well and making sure we're decisive to make sure that we are predictable to other people. And that's tip number three. Uh, there's more tips on the on the way, so listen out. Thanks for listening. Any comments? put them below and then please subscribe um, uh, subscribe below as well uh, my name's Ian Moore thanks for listening and we'll see you again soon thank you